evening and thank you for joining us. That seems to be a challenge for the Zambian economy with growth prospects looking bleak, foreign and local debt rising, and the fiscal deficit threatening to reach unsustainable levels. Government has now declared that it's not business as usual and is calling for tough measures and action to put the economy back on track. On Monday, special cabinet meeting held at State House discussed the state of the economy and issued various policy directives which, if implemented, may help them start the economy and reduce the risk on debt from high to moderate. The question is, can government walk the talk? On this special interview on the state of the economy, we host Finance Minister Margaret Manakatwe to discuss the resolutions made by cabinet. Minister, I'm happy that you could join us. Thank you, Revajan. Well, to start with, in your briefing to the media yesterday, there was a very strong statement the cabinet resolved that this is not business as usual and that tough times call for tough measures. Confirmation that we have a problem or we're in trouble. And I want you to start by generally describing the state of the economy. Are we in a crisis? Revolving, we're not. We're not in a crisis. What we are doing is trying to avoid getting into a crisis. Yes, there are challenges in the economy. Liquidity is tight. Debt is rising. We want to ensure that we don't get to crisis. So by meeting as a cabinet, we were interrogating just that. What are we going to do to ensure that the macro still remains on a positive trajectory? That we are able to meet our debt obligations as and when they fall due. This is what we're doing. We're trying to manage the economy to ensure that that positive growth that we had anticipated at 4%, now going down to 3% still remains positive and uh, growing into the future. Yeah. A, a, a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, commentary and a lot of uh, analysts are saying you are probably not really confirming that you have a crisis, but it's good that you have admitted. You've won a lot of kudos, if I must mention, I was scanning around the reactions and people have commended you for coming out that there is a problem. But then they say, if this is not a crisis, then what is it? What is it? You're calling for special cabinet meetings, agents. Meetings, issuing directives and, and austerity measures. Doesn't this point to a crisis? Uh, no, it doesn't. It's pointing to a cabinet that is proactively managing the economy. Because when you see light at the end of the tunnel and it's amber, you've got to make sure you don't get to the end of the tunnel and crash. You've got to do something about it now so that it, it, the light turns green. So what we're seeing here is a, is a light that is saying, tighten up your belts, that is saying, manage the liquidity, that is saying, dismantle your debt, Exter uh, especially local debt, that is saying that you've got to make sure that you are protecting social infrastructure. So we are saying, how do we ensure that the macro remains stable? How do we ensure that the, uh, the do domestic um, arenas are being dismantled? So really, we are taking the necessary action now. We're giving ourselves the pill, the medicine, as a government, to ensure that this economy remains on a positive trajectory. If I'm sitting home, I'm a civil servant, ordinary Zambian, who has been to declare a builder or, or a carpenter, and you say, he's at tough times, coming for tough action. What should I take home? I think what should, you should take home if you're sitting as a bricklayer is that um, here is a government that is trying to ensure that that bricklayer can still put bread on the table. They can still buy, buy a bag of milk. We're trying to ensure that as we take the tough measures that we have, we are able to bring back liquidity into the market, the private sector begins to get the money that they need to be able to employ that bricklayer. That's what we're saying here. Now let's look at the, the resolutions that uh, are directed at the special cabinet meeting made. Zambians are feeling you're not probably listening to yourselves as government, and probably not even listening to cabinet policy makers. They say this is not different from the Zambian plans. This is not different from the austerity measures we announced last year. Is there any difference? What's the difference? The difference is, yes, they may look the same, the austerity measures. The difference is that the circumstances are changing. The economy is dynamic. The world is dynamic. So much as we set ourselves those austerity measures and we resolved to carry through with them, 
Now we're saying there's even a greater resolve to ensure that the measures really, really take place. So when we say that um, this cabinet, each minister concerned is going to be given a task or tasks with timelines, with constant review, and we mean constant, like on a monthly basis, reviewing with my ministry and uh, cabinet office, ensuring that we're following through with the actions that we have taken, that's exactly what we mean by greater resolve. We are resolved to sort out this economy. And that's what the austerity meeting that we took uh, in, in, in June last year, June last year, are really saying, we're, we're saying to ourselves that let's even be more resolved to solve this economy because the world is changing, the world is dynamic. So we can't sit still and say, continue at the same pace as we did last year. So we are putting our foot on the accelerator and making sure that those um, measures are really, really resolved. And I did put it to you, Minister, you're, you're, you're facing a bit of a big test. Sometimes believe you don't have enough capacity to carry this through. You failed to, to, to manage other austerity measures you've announced before. And this one is probably another one that you're not going to carry. We are. You need for sure. We are going to carry this through. We have not given us tasks that are impossible. We have given ourselves tasks that are very, very doable. So when we say that we're going to dismantle local debt, for example, we have started that already, and we're going to make sure that happens. Our local debt is 15.6 billion. We are saying we are putting money back into the economy by us ensuring that we reduce the debt, especially external debt, create the fiscal space that we require to be able to put money back into the economy, especially the liquidity that is missing right now. So we are determined to ensure that the state measures so that we have given ourselves are carried out. One court economist, John Bukanema, was, was saying a patient with a foot problem cannot handle it, sir. You, need, you, you have a problem as government. You probably need to get in another partner, probably IMF, to help you undertake this painful measure, which may be too hard for government to undertake. You risk abandoning it ministry. Certainly not. In fact, the budget, if we can display that we have amputated our own leg and we carry through with it, we're actually more likely to get the IMF sooner rather than later. These are our measures. So we are owning them as a government and as a cabinet. And we will ensure that should IMF come on board or any other funder for that matter, they are seeing that we are resolute about ensuring that this economy turns. Maybe for interest's sake, what, what happened? What, what challenges did you face when, when you announced those three measures? I know we, we spoke about the three measures 2017. 2018, uh, strongest statement ever from yourself. 2018. Yes, uh, June. Yes. And, and we're here where we are. And, and it doesn't seem like we really implemented the, implemented the, the resolutions, uh, austerity measures. What challenges have you faced in, in, in implementing these measures? Political challenges? Political pressure? No. Political pressure? I don't feel because around that cabinet, everybody is resolved. The, the measures we took last year. 2018, everybody was resolved. We have come back to the table, analyzed the economy and the state of it, analyzed what is going on in the external market and say to ourselves, what more can we do? So yes, we have been embarked on the measure last year and uh, yes, we are going through some of those things that we say we're going to do uh, in, in, in the 2018 uh, uh, budget. So when we say that the, the deficit is coming from 7.9 in 2017, came down to 7.6% in 2018. And we're saying we want to see a deficit of 6.5 this year. This is showing you, the budget, that we are surely on the path to a smaller deficit. That is what we're doing here. And 6.5%, if we're going to achieve it, these measures are absolutely critical to ensure that the revenue base is, is increased and the cost rationalization is also embarked on uh, resolutely. Mm -hmm. As we go on, you probably see that maybe the political pressure is more. I, I alluded to political pressure because of the patriotic brand. Probably in the recent years, your foundation or your national anthem has been infrastructure, and this is going to be affected by the measures of this coming year. We are saying cancel debt. 
where it is not a priority. We're saying postpone where we can. And we're saying slow down where we can. So those projects that are a session of economic return, we are certainly going to contribute with them. So we're just looking at the debt that we have accumulated over the years. And yes, it has gone in the main to infrastructure. But that is where we believe there's a return waiting to be made on that investment that we've made. So slowing down, meaning that we're going to reduce uh, the debt and its escalation, and we're going to ensure that the fiscal space that's created goes back into uh, dismantling uh, debt and also ensuring that we invest in social infrastructure. We will not stop investing in social infrastructure. We we'll continue to do that. Maybe I jump the gun. Let me take you back. I want to go back to the highlight, the key issues that you resolve in cabinet in nine years. Maybe you could point out some of the major ones. The major ones, uh, Rebaji, is firstly, review our debt stock, especially debt that's in the pipeline, and look at how we can prioritize. We're going to do this together around cabinet. Okay. What, could we, what is a must do debt? What is a debt that we can postpone? What is a debt that we can cancel? What is a debt that we can slow down? That's what we're saying. And in so doing, look at all the sectors and look at how we can maintain a debt that is sustainable into the future. Now, debt servicing is probably the single largest problem the government is facing. And, and, and Kevin agreed that the fiscal deficit needs to be reduced to sustainable levels. And, and the risk of defaulting is high. Risk of debt distress is high. What assurance are you giving that will not default when it comes to? Certainly, on the um, external debt, we will not default. We will not default. We haven't. We have managed our debt, and we are continuing to manage our debt. On the local debt, which is about 15.6 billion quacha right now, we are going to systematically dismantle. And like I said earlier, we've begun to do that already. No. That was recently projected to start at 73%. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. It is the correct figure. 73% yeah. looks like more, more like a crisis. No, it's not, because in the revival, there is um, external debt, there is uh, government guarantees, there is uh, local debt. So it's a combination of these that leads up to the 73%. This is why we're saying on the, on the debt itself, it's actually 43% if you strip that out. So that is what we're trying to manage down to the level of 30%. Which one is the correct one? 73% of GDP? 43%? 73 is a combination of external debt, local debt, arrears, and guarantees. That's the 73%. You take the debt on its own, it's 43%. Okay. Which one is an ideal percentage? With external Where you're sitting as government, where do you want to take the debt? With external debt, you want to reduce it to what with the external debt at 43%, the, the limit is actually 30%. This is where we need to get that 43 down to 30. That is the most important figure for us to bring down the debt, which is at 43% right now. You didn't get born into it. I, I, I know from the opposition, from civil society, and, and many other organizations warning that you were, you were going to surpass the limit, and you didn't do so. Was there a reason for that? That's government. We listened. The 30% actually is, is only a new ratio from IMF and World Bank. That, uh, until recently, was at 40%. So in effect, we're just about 3% above that limit. Having brought in this 30% uh, ratio now by IMF and World Bank, this is why we're having to actually manage our debt down as well. Maybe this is the, this is the time to correct and ask you. Uh, are you listening to our debt from our Oh, yes. Constantly. Yes. Opposition party. Constantly. Um, We're in Parliament, so there's a lot of debate in Parliament, so we listen there, and also, generally speaking, we, li we listen to other stakeholders externally as well as internally. We're a listening government. Now, the resolution by Cabinet on these issues, one is that you, there's an information to indefinitely postpone the contraction of all new non concessional loans in the intervening period. Does this mean we will not see you signing new loans or hear? Announcements, government officials, and loans, borrowing. We haven't said that we're going to stop completely those loans 
that are required to spur this economy on. We have also said that we need to invest in social infrastructure. We can't afford to stop that. So any new loan is going to be obviously uh, reviewed closely and will only take on what we have to take on. That's what we're saying. Anything that is not a priority will not take on. We'll only take on that debt and we really would want to see only concessional debt coming through. But sometimes we cannot get concessional debt because of where it's coming from. But we know that uh, World Bank debt, uh, for example, is very concessional. So if we go that way, and it's something that is totally required by this economy, we'll, we'll take it, we'll take it talking about no. very cautiously, very cautiously. That's why we're reviewing the whole debt stock and saying, postpone, slow down, cancel, even, and only take on those debts that are absolutely critical. So we have in the debt, in the debt stock, some debts that have not even begun to be dispersed. Can we manage those? Can we slow them down? Can we postpone them? There are some that have already begun. We we'll carry on with those. That's what we're doing. And managing, of course, the level, the levels of disbursement within the period that needs to be dispersed. We are managing those disbursements as well. You, you, you've spoken about debt and, and inspiring economic growth, but sort of in an ordinary eye's perception, we have overborrowed and the economy is not growing. Where have we gone wrong? We have an economy that is growing. Last year it grew by 3.7% against many countries within this region that are growing by 3%. So the economy is growing. Even what we're saying now that we have, we have projected 4% in the 2019 budget, but because of the external and the internal, we're saying let's, let's slow down on the growth, and it is going to slow down because of what's happening anyway. So we are saying let's bring it down to the level around 3% because of what's happening. So the growth is still there. It's not negative, it is positive, but it's lower than what we have predicted. It's probably down, down from 8 to 7% uh, 10 years ago, 9 yes. years ago. Yes, um, it was 7% uh, 9, 10 years ago. But as you know, when we had the economic downturn due to climatic changes and power shortages which slowed down our economic growth, we have now come to levels that are under the 7%. So coming down to the levels of 3.7 down to 3 and around there and below, we are saying let's at least maintain that possibility of growth. And going into the future, Assuming that we don't have the same challenges, we would want to see growth even more than 3%. The, 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 realistically speaking, a, a, a nation like Zambia needs to grow at 10%. Really, so I'd really love, to, to I'd love a double digit uh, growth in GDP, really. And uh, to be honest, when you look at the potential that we have here, and if we don't have any adverse uh, impacts on the economy, if we can get back to the seven and beyond, we should be able to, to, to get to double digit in the future. Let's get back to the loans. You, you, you also resolved to cancel some signed but undisbursed loans. Uh, what does this mean for contract, for contract resolution? Penalties? Um, we will review every single contract. There is often a, a clause within the contracts where you can cancel, but we have to review every single loan on an individual basis and make sure that there aren't any clauses that, uh, that will lead us into penalties. How much is likely to be cancelled? That figure we don't know yet, okay? We will propose, uh, as a ministry, we will propose, and then we'll take this to cabinet and be able to review and agree as a cabinet what is going to be cancelled or postponed or slowed down. Who are the lenders? The lenders are, are many, multilateral, bilateral, and uh, in there is, is Chinese, okay? About 30% of the the, the debt, which is $10.1 billion, 30% of that is, is Chinese. The rest are multilateral, bilateral, and the middle one. In, in, in terms of cancelling, would you know which percentage is your customer? Is no. Would it be like a Chinese loan? Is it mainly a multilateral loan? We're taking the whole loan book and we're reviewing all of it. Okay. All of it. And in so doing,
come up with a proposal that is going to, um, uh, to be reviewed by council. So in, in this case, there may be no, no loans being cancelled after all. It will be reviewed. In terms of um, a deficit. So whatever we do, we should ensure that we end up with 6.5% deficit. Not long ago, there was talk about Zambia renegotiating loans with China. Is there any progress on that? Yes, uh, there's progress in that, in the sense that uh, we, are, we are talking, and uh, in the name, we're looking at how we can ensure that uh, the, um, the loan book, which is in dollars, is actually swapped into yuan. This is uh, the Chinese money. So we want to ensure that we go from Kwacha to uh, the RMB and taking out the, uh, the dollar and removing the volatility there. That's what we're doing. And, and uh, I must say that uh, we've gone somewhere into Wuchringa and there's two central banks, the Bank of Zambia and the People's Bank of China are, are talking and to, to going towards a uh, memorandum of understanding. Is, is that likely to happen soon? Yes, yes. The Chinese have been very amenable to that. And for us, uh, we, we think that we should be able to conclude in the near future. When you talk about uh, a debt, one other bigger problem that you have is, is, is the issue of domestic value. And, and I know that uh, one of the major challenges going down from this was that local companies are being stifled out of business by the government, its own government. And, and some of them are being pursued by banks, some are closed, because you owe them. What is the plan? Well, this is why we're doing what we're doing. Trying to create the fiscal space that will allow us to be able to pay those areas that uh, uh, domestic um, debt is, is coming up to the 15.6 billion. Yes, we've been borrowing in this market. We want to reduce that so that the private sector can take their rightful space. So we have a dismant dismantling plan, which has begun actually, which will ensure that the, the, the arrears are cleared over a period. How much are you owing in terms of arrears? It's, it's uh, well, as I said, it's a plan. We release every month something to make sure that we are able to pay contractors uh, and uh, providers of goods and services. And we want to ensure that we can, uh, by the end of the year, dismantle the debt that is owed to, to, uh, to local suppliers. If we need to go, if we don't do what we say we're going to do uh, by stopping and slowing down and cancelling some of the debt, we're going to be finding it difficult to reduce that, uh, that fiscus that we need be able to dismantle the local debt. So the local contractors who you owe should hold on to December and, 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 and ask you to, 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 to come and reaffirm that you committed that by December you have dismantled the arrears. We, we have started already, so we do that every month. We pay arrears. We we'll pay some of the arrears constantly. And we, we are saying that by the end of the year, we should have cleared uh, domestic arrears. You're being accused, uh, Minister, of concentrating on infrastructure and abandoning the private sector, which should ideally grow the economy. We have not abandoned uh, the local private sector. We have put this infrastructure to ensure that the private sector can be able to get to a road, for example. If there's an opportunity where there's no road, we will put a road so the private sector can actually go and implement their project. If, the, if, if for example, you want to, 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 to start an industry where there's no power, you will not start your industry. So we will ensure that the likes of Kapil Gorge Law, which is coming on stream in 2020, that it is coming on stream in 2020. So let's say we're putting infrastructure to ensure that the private sector can thrive. And also, we're putting infrastructure where the private sector are also contractors. So they are also taking part in this development and uh, growing their businesses. I heard you talk about tightening uh, your belts and uh, uh, urging government that this is a time to do that. Are you also doing that as, as an official? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We have said that ministries and spending agencies should not spend, even if an item is in the budget, should not spend unless they've got the funds to be able to pay for what they are contracting. So we're saying don't spend what you don't have. So the tightening is going to happen. It's been happening and it's going to continue to happen with a lot more controls. That's what we're doing and this is going to have to happen. Is it affecting you as minister? The tightening of the 
is affecting everybody. Every single minister. What did I say? Number three. Absolutely, absolutely. All that is under review. So the permanent secretaries are again under instruction to ensure that they're able to follow up on um, the respective ministries that there is tightening of belts. It is real. It is real. You, you, you're you banned, in, in, in short, that's what I, the word I'll use, these agencies and ministries from contracting or procuring any goods unless there's money available to, to avoid a few irregular years. But you've got institutions like hospitals that sometimes run on date in terms of getting food for the patients. You've got institutions like food reserve agency. If you're not per purchasing the various ways of uh, cash, it always gets that on date. So what are you saying? There are critical supplies that will not have to wait for cash. So drugs, for example, okay, will not have to wait for cash to be found because it's utterly critical. And some of these supplies are on contract and in bulk anyway, those will continue. We are saying it's goods and services that ministry of cleaning agency, for example, if I need to do a trip and I'm buying a ticket on credit, on credit we're saying, hey, you can't do that. That's what we're saying. Now, let's, let's look at another issue. When we, we, we discuss the date, and there's a school of thought that part of the date that we have in Eurobonds, this could be dismantled by government simply setting off some price tables and pay the date. Is that on the table? Is that kind of thought on the table for government? We are not in such a crisis. We are not in such a crisis where we need to be looking at every one of our state owned enterprises and setting them off. We are not there. We are saying, let us manage our debt in our government. We are not saying let us start selling our our family silver. We are not. So in fact, this is why you see when you hear that uh, uh, Zesco has been sold to the, given to the Chinese or the BBC given to the Chinese, we we are saying, hey, this is not happening because these assets are created in a special purpose vehicle and they're not collateralized in any way. So we have not collateralized any state-owned enterprise, and as such, we will not be forced to sell them, and we are not forcing ourselves to sell them. But if an opportunity comes that is really, really fantastic, we will certainly look at it. Zambians are worried uh, that at the rate we're going, debt servicing is rising uh, at a very fast rate, and at the rate we're going, probably the budget, the function of the budget will only service two functions, pay back debt service loan, and pay salary. Is that where we're headed? No. Is that where we are at the moment? Where we pay salary and then pay back the loan and, and we've got nothing remaining in the pocket? No, no, no. That's not where we are at all. That's not where we are. We have uh, certain expenditures that are non discretionary, like debt, like salaries, which we must pay. We are, we are still able to pay for uh, discretionary costs. So we are saying let's manage it in such a way that we create the space that is required to reduce the deficit. To 6.5. So that's what we're doing. We're not saying it is a crisis. We are saying let us not get to the crisis that we're doing. You, you, you spoke about uh, selling and that you, you're not keen to sell in, uh, sell in for our status. And I know there's an instruction that your ministry and IDC should uh, should uh, expedite improvement of, of, of our status, performance of our status. Yes. And I know that again in the 2019 budget, in your speech, you did talk about investing in certain our status. Uh, Where yes. are we in terms of, of, of Well, that's a process. So you're talking of running shares? We're talking listing them on the tax of the chain. Uh, both um, Zafiko and Zisk, especially this um, uh, uh, line, is in profitability. In fact, now I'm looking at at least seven or eight state owned enterprises that are actually paying the dividend uh, to government. So we have uh, tasked IDC to ensure that these past staples tend to profitability and are able to contribute uh, to uh, the, the treasury. That's what we're saying. And those that are ailing and can't tend to profitability, we are thinking we should be bringing private sector involvement, equity partners, to be able to come in and take the shareholding. Where they're ailing still, we are we'll be ready to uh, prepare to sell. So there are very few companies paying dividends. Right Meaning now, a, a huge number of past so right now, there are about eight that are paying the dividend. Okay. Don't forget, a few years ago, there was only one company that was paying the dividend. So obviously, what IDC is doing by going from one to eight 
uh, companies paying dividends is obviously an improvement, and we hope that this improvement can continue. And, 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 and you have no intention of offloading the land to farm? We are open. That should be an option. We, are, we certainly it's an option. It's an option that we'll look at. It's an option that we're looking at. I listened board uh, this morning. We said when we can bring in equity partners and we're able to make a return uh, by bringing in these partners and get a dividend, we are open to that. Austerity measures, in a way, mean less spending by government, less borrowing by government. And economists are arguing and warning that as government should big spend and big pay in the market. And when you lessen the, the, the square expenditure, it means you're, you're shrinking the economy. No, so good Nigel. No, good Nigel. If we spend less, we spend less, that means there is less pressure on revenues that we get out of taxes because we're spending less. If we spend less, that means that we're not, that if we're not borrowing from, from the uh, local banking sector, it means that the likelihood of interest rates coming down is even higher. So this can only be for the good of everybody, especially the banking sector. Are you getting enough support from Simple Projects? Simple Projects like uh, Land Tightly are taking on to be concluded. Land Tightly, we'd be pleased to know that we've done 56,000 titles already and we've earned about 44 million doing just that. And this is a project that we believe we can actually do 300,000 titles in the course of this year and earn some money doing that. The civil servants are on board. And to be honest, um, everybody should be on board to ensure that we can achieve what we say we want to achieve. And to be honest, if we should be probably Zambia, whether you're a civil servant or you are out there as a, as a, as a citizen working in a, in a private company, all of us should be saying, let's work together to be accountable and ensure that this economy can get back on an even way. That's what I think. Whether it's a civil servant or any other person, we should all be accountable for our actions and be proudly Zambian and taking on this challenge as that of Zambia, not just of civil servants. Talking about everyone participating, we've had so many indirects, the latest one, the NDA. We, we, we're not having an economic indirect where everybody's going to be trampled? <laughs> no, not, not in the near future, anyway. Not, not, not in the near future. You're not interested in other, other, other people? Well, ideas, suggestions? These are, these are continuous because we meet we meet uh, the business chambers quite quite often. We meet the farmers in need quite often. We are constantly talking to the uh, association of manufacturers. We are talking to them constantly. If an indoor is what uh, the, the public wants, we certainly do it. But certainly right now, I have not been called to to get an indoor going uh, yet. Mukula was on the table uh, when you mentioned money and calling for an orderly. Uh, trade uh, in, in, in this commodity. Why would we be slowly? I mean, this is this is green gold. It is. We needed to normalize uh, the situation. We needed to ensure, yes, that there's orderliness. And now we believe we're ready to open up uh, Mukula and Amban and start seeing some returns from there. We set up a trading platform here in Lusaka. I'm oh, sorry, in, in Zambia, where the Mukula is. And the uh, the, uh, the foreigners, whether it's um, European or Chinese, will come and be able to purchase from here. We have opened up the borders for uh, Mukula from Congo DR, and these have started moving. So I think we're ready, and we've got we've got it organised in such a manner that uh, we are going to make the money that we should be making from Mukula, and not a few individuals who are smuggling. There's there's no or no progress on. Uh... Uh, uh, reforms on uh, at Desco as well as the uh, ERB coming up with the um, cost of service tariff. These are issues that have been on the table for a while. Now. Reform on Desco is a must, uh, but uh, we're talking about reform in the energy sector. Okay. Again, we're quite resolved to ensure that Desco turns to operational and financial efficiency. So yes, the cost of service study has uh, has uh, uh, stalled, but we are again very much on course to having this resolved, uh, and the African Development Bank have given us support to be able to pay for this uh, uh, study that will help inform what tariff we should be implementing into the future. I'm interested in one of, 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 the, of, of the resolutions which gives you 
and, and cabinet so the task of monitoring uh, tasks and deadlines timelines given to each and every minister uh, an indication that probably there was a bit of luck with your minister ministry no i think he's really saying step up step up so that there's more oversight by each of the ministers and ministries and uh, that's why the permanent secretary themselves have set up their own uh, team to monitor and the ministers are going to be ensuring that what they've said they're going to do or what they've been tasked with, they're following up. It's really taking closer control and monitoring and accountability by each of the ministries. That's what we're doing. And I think this is important as we meet regularly at cabinet level to be able to review what uh, we said and what we set out. Uh, you're, you're, you're playing a leading role in this one. Uh, isn't that too much for you as Minister of Finance? No, it's not. I've got very competent people in the ministry. I've got Secretary Treasury who supervises um, um, other controlling officers in ministries and I think this is a natural uh, task for us, Minister of Finance, to be able uh, to monitor through my PSs and my Secretary Treasury, coupled with Secretary Cabinet. We are not afraid of this role at all. Another issue you discussed uh, as Cabinet is building up international reserves and, and address the high demand for oil, because of the supply in the market. And, and, and people are wondering, where did we get it wrong? Our reserves have been so low. Reserves currently at about 1.4, 1 1.5, uh, about 1.4 must be import cover. Okay, they've come down, yes, but they've come down for many reasons. We want to see reserves at at least three months import cover. And this is why we trust the central bank with building these reserves over uh, the medium to long term. We have said to them that look. Go when we need when we need foreign exchange as government. Go on the open market and get that foreign exchange. Go and start reserving in gold, in bullion. So go and buy gold locally, whole market, and put uh, put that in our vaults as reserves. So we want to see reserves going up, and we believe that if we as a, we only go to reserve only to pay debt only if it's absolutely necessary and try to pay our debt as much as possible from open market authorities. That's what we're going to do um, and that's what we task the central bank to do. The foreign exchange rate has been very volatile of late. Any measures in there trying to stabilize it? I think you've seen what, uh, what uh, Bank of Zambia have, have done recently and it has stabilized somewhat. We need to see a lot more foreign exchange coming into the market. So supporting the diversification quest Absolutely quickly away from copper, so we can get that truck export out there to increase for exchange supply uh, in the market. As you know, that is a, an issue of supply and demand. So if we can increase the supply of foreign exchange in the market, we should really help to do that. So we should talk and walk the dissipation. Even in the mining sector itself, it's not just copper that we have. We have manganese. We have, as I said, gold, we have uranium, we have nickel, we have so many others that we need to be ensuring that um, foreign direct investment can get to and be able to actualize uh, what we can export to be able to earn so much needed foreign exchange. So we're winding down the interview. Two, two last questions. One is that for a long time you believe negative sentiment in social media have impacted on the economy. Yes. Yes, I, I, I do believe that. I, I do believe that. I think it's something that uh, all of us as Zambians should also take seriously because sentiment does impact the foreign exchange. If uh, peddling things like we have sold or, or given the Chinese our Zambia electricity supply cooperation, surely that is likely to send a good. Um, uh, connotation. If we're building an airport, international airport, Lusaka, the new one, which we haven't even finished building, and we're still in grace period, that that has been given to Chinese, that in itself is going to be sending uh, negative uh, vibes internationally and locally. So what we're saying is we should minimize on these untruths that have happened in social media. For example, we have printed 23 billion kwacha 
we have preached by him. For I have preached and paid three big fortune to the sake of man. Surely I would not be struggling to pay uh, the uh, local debt arrears that I'm currently owing. It's things like that that I believe we really need to be very level headed and tone down on some of the sensationalist type news, which is a real mistake. Finally, Minister, when all these measures have been demanded, what does Angela expect to see? You should expect to see um, a macroeconomic uh, stability uh, situation in Zambia. You should expect to see more liquidity in the market. You should expect to see that the deficit is coming down to the level of 6.5 as we have projected for ourselves. Do people expect more activity in the economy? Activity Global in the economy must cost. continue. Must continue. That's what I'm saying. That macro stability and ensuring that that activity that would spur on um, the economy is, is happening. Low, uh, low cost of living? Low well, cost of living? You'd like that, wouldn't you? Like all of us would. And that's where we're working towards what we're doing. Look, recently, the uh, electricity tariff was going to be put up. We said, let's wait for the cost of service, uh, uh, cost of service study. Uh, just to Which is taking forever. Well, it's, it's not going to take forever now. As I said, it's very much in procurement stage now to get a new consultant. The old one has been set aside, the one who was very slow. And we're going to get a new um, consultant who will be, will be given a period in which to complete the cost of service study. So we need moving forward. I'll give you an opportunity just to, to speak to the public. Any appeal you want to make? I think the appeal is that um, we're doing what we're doing to be able to ensure, to ensure that we can maintain macroeconomic stability, to be able to ensure that we can see that growth of around the 3% and going into 3.2% in 2020, 3.4% uh, in 2021, going up to 3.7% the following year. We want to see growth and we want to ensure that those areas that are impacted negatively on growth are tackled one of which is the sustainability of debt. So that's what we're doing, and we want to believe that the public will see the results of what we're doing in the near future. Minister, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, very much. Thank you very much. Well, that's all we have on this special interview. We've been discussing the state of the economy with the Minister of Finance, Ms. Margaret Monacabri.